He says, I, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. That word uh, beauty is actually delightfulness, uh, right? Uh, oftentimes when we think of the word beauty, we think of physically attractive, and that's actually a very small part of the definition of beauty. Beauty is so much more than that. But I don't know, there's people that you enjoy being around and you talk to them and they lift up your spirits and you feel better about being around them. Well, you can rightly say that's a beautiful person, right? They have a beautiful soul. They have a beautiful character, right? That's, that's the idea here. It's not that God's house has to be beautiful physically. Uh, it's that it's a place you want to be. You want to be in the presence of the Lord because you benefit from it, because you have delight in it, because it makes you feel better. It's pleasant. How often do we feel like that about the church? It's pleasant to go to church. It's delightful to go to church. I hope <laughs> that we feel like that a lot. But I... Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but there is, there is a truth in that some people don't feel like that when they go to church. Some people feel judged. Some people feel unloved. Some people feel unaccepted. And they don't come back because they don't feel the beauty of God's house. And it's our responsibility as the church to make sure that people feel like this place is beautiful. <laughs> right? Now, we're in Norwood, Colorado with a little church that's kind of shabby and beat up, and we have a lot of traffic in and out during the week with food share. It's not always the prettiest place, but hopefully people come here and they see the beauty here, right? To behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple, right? Once again, this is the active part of waiting, to meditate on God's word to think about his word and its truth. What we're doing right now is meditation. We're trying to understand what David was saying from his perspective, and we're trying to apply it to our own lives so that we would be as passionate as David. We would only have one thing that we want from the Lord, and that's to worship him more, to have a deeper relationship with him, to, to feel more connected, to be a part of his work and his ministry to the world. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Second thing we want to talk about is in verse 5 here. For in the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me and he will lift me up on a rock. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. So when you're waiting on God and you feel distant from God, you get back to the basics. You go to church, you pray, you read your Bible, you, you be around other Christians, and then <laughs> there's something that you need to remind yourself of, who you are in Christ. He will conceal me in his tabernacle. We need to remember who we are in Christ. Now, David wasn't specifically talking about Christ, <laughs> though when Jesus talked about David's writings in the Psalms. He said, you know, he was talking about me more often than not, <laughs> right? And so I think we can take this as David projecting the Messiah, thinking about the Savior. He says, this is who my salvation comes from. This is from God. God will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent. He will hide me. He will lift me up upon a rock. When you go read the New Testament, you read phrases like 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away, and behold, the new have come. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Uh, and then, of course, if you want the big passage, you go read Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses uh, 3 through 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, uh, first uh, starts and says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Uh, it, he, he predestined us to be adoption of sons through Jesus Christ in uh, himself. 
uh, verse 6, he will freely bestow on us in the beloved. Verse 7, in him we have redemption through the blood, uh, the forgiveness of our trespasses, which he lavished upon us. Verse 9, uh, according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him. There's, there's two uh, references to God there, the Father and the Son, uh, with a view of administration. Uh, verse 11, or sorry, at the end of verse uh, 10, all things in Christ, things in heavens and things on earth, in him also we have obtained an inheritance. Uh, verse 12, who were the first to hope in Christ, right? You guys get this, right? It's in Christ. And we need to constantly remind ourselves when we feel like we're apart from God, when we feel like everything is against me, and maybe we question whether or not God is for us, when we're waiting in the midst of those circumstances, we need to remember that we are in Christ. We are new creatures because we are in Christ. A lot of people at the end of their emails or their letters, they say, in Christ, right? The Apostle Paul did it. Other of the uh, apostles have mentioned this idea that we are in Christ. And when you remember that you're in Christ, then all of those fears kind of fall away. At least they should. right? Because if you're in God, if God is protecting you, if he is hiding you and concealing you in his temple, in his tabernacle, in his tent, in a secret place, and he lifts you up on the rock. When I read that, I immediately thought of what Peter's proclamation, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus responds and says, yes, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. That, he's not talking about Peter, even though his Petros, you know, is, is a word for rock. He's talking about himself on this statement of Peter's, that, that Christ is the living son of God. Right? That he is the Messiah, he is the Savior of the world. Upon that rock, he will build his church. And here David says, hundreds of years before that, he will lift me up upon a rock, being in Christ. 